Hello everyone, this is Japan Spirit, and this is Takashi Kawatani in Tokyo. I'm Itadia. This program is about revisiting Japan Spirit, the spiritual ethos that's been the backbone of, of our nation. Here in Japan, alarming events are happening every day, indicating the disintegration of national culture, public morality, family ties, and national pride. Uh, how can we build a kinder, a more vibrant community by, by leveraging our traditions without going right or left, but remaining a responsible center? This is the purpose of our program. Our topic today is kata, or form. Kata is a proven process or method by masters, and it comes in many ways from art forms such as tea ceremony, food presentation, decluttering or cleaning at factories, to standing in line at bus stops. Kata brings aesthetic shape and quality to various Japanese things. It is visible in daily Japanese lifestyles and it can be invisible. Well actually kata uh, means form or shape as Ms. Ita has explained. Uh, the Japanese word kata originally means a mold made out of soil, but of course today it is made of uh, plastic and uh, steel because it's easier to use. Now, what it means is the original, what the kata really means is the, is the original thing from which uh, replicas can be made. What can we make out of this uh, mold? I think this is for make cookies or cakes. Cookies or cakes, it looks like. And the next one? It's a very unique shape. <laughs> what, do you, what do you call it? I think this one is takoyaki. And I think you need to explain to the inter international viewers. Oh, takoyaki, I think it's, um, it's a dough mm -hmm. and mixed with uh, octopus. Octopus. And then you bake it. Okay. Bake it together. Right. That's right. Uh, it's a uniquely Japanese cuisine and you can find in any uh, street or, uh, streets in towns in Japan. So these are the actual physical kata or the mold out of which the same things can be uh, produced without compromising the quality, original meaning. Now let's go deeper into several types of kata. As far as I'm concerned, there are three types of kata and I'll show you by photos. First one is about kata that does not move, no moving kata, such as dress pattern and uh, steel mold. If a uh, dress pattern changes its shape, it's a problem because <laughs> your dress gets into different shapes yes, right. and people complain. And the mold, the steel mold, is a mold for producing plastic casings of a TV sets and uh, electric components and all that. So Japan, as some of the viewers know, uh, is a champion of making molds. So that's the kata that should not move, right? And the uh, second uh, uh, type is kata that moves. Because this one must move. Because this kata that does, not mo uh, does move is about people, like in martial arts, sports, and uh, no theatrical play dancers. In sports or dancing, if your pattern of, of bo uh, body movements um, uh, does not move, it, it's very, <laughs> it looks very odd. So it has to be flexible and it must move. Now, there's one more type of kata, which I call a social kata. A society also hands down from generation to generation a certain protocol, certain belief system and social values. Good values are uh, taught from parents to children, to grandchildren, as the uh, patterns that they're supposed to follow, see, o over generations. So even society has its own unique kata. I, th I think any culture of the world, Chinese kata, Japanese kata, French kata, Asian kata, uh, in its society. Here, let's watch kata in martial art.
Well, this is a beautiful uh, presentation of uh, martial art uh, kata. As, you, as we saw, they are performing to the standards, to the techniques that they have mastered over the years. Now, some of you might think that the practicing the same routine, basic forms or patterns of the movements, whether punching or kicking or hitting, uh, the, uh, the sports people, um, I, I mean, um, you might feel, you might, you might think that, uh, that it's uh, very boring. But actually, if you repeat the same routine techniques and basic patterns over and over again, 100 times, 1,000 times, you get into, so to speak, kind of a trance mode of mind. And uh, you, hear, you begin to hear no sounds, no noises around because of your pure mind. And uh, you begin internal dialogue because worldly desires, worries, all those voices come to your ears. You want to get out of it. You get out of it, but they visit you again. So through this constant interaction, hearing your internal dialogue, um, you, you are as if looking for your balance, your base, your foundation so that you'll be well prepared, well equipped uh, whenever your enemy attacks you out of nowhere, how uh, suddenly they may attack you. So keeping the routine is highly, very creative practice. So when trainees get training from the master, is it like apprenticeship or buy more structured programs? I think it is uh, both because uh, techniques or uh, waza can be acquired through curriculum and science, but the deep learning, the secret of, of that, can only, can only be acquired through observation, visually and inspirationally, and often with, uh, without any uh, written rules. Okay, let's take a break here, and here is today's topic corner. Uh, this studio today is connected via uh, telephone with uh, Munich, Germany. Uh, with a specialist of uh, argumentation, persuasion, decision-making, and ethics. Uh, today's guest is Dr. Thomas Wilhelm, management consultant, co-director of Project Philosophy, and president of East and West Communication. Okay, Thomas, uh, here's my first question to you. Uh, do you think the current immigration problem is changing the European people's attitude toward foreign people or immigrants in any way? Well, yes, this is a very, very good question. I think, uh, as you know from the news, it's really a hot topic right now here in Europe. Uh, mm -hmm. The immigration problem, all the refugees coming to Europe. Mm -hmm. Here in Germany, we had over more, we had more than one million refugees last year. Mm -hmm. So the people are split over the question what to do, and. Um, well, the, the attitude, I think, is really changing. So I'm personally a little bit concerned about uh, the changes in the attitude of the people mm. because you even see starting violence against refugees mm -hmm. and um, you have a lot of right-wing parties getting stronger and stronger. Mm -hmm. And this is really something that people here are really deeply concerned about this. Is this and, a trend you're yeah. just talking about? split and the right-wing party and so forth. Is it a new experience to Germans and Europeans or you, you've had already uh, uh, had that experiences before in the history? Well, actually we had this before and there were always some right-wing tendencies here and uh, right-wing parties, but mm -hmm. um, there is, for example, here in Germany, we have a new party, it's called AFD, Mm -hmm. And it's very conservative and it's very nationalistic. Mm -hmm. And in March, um, in about four weeks, there will be new regional elections and people expect that this party, the AFD, will be quite successful and they will get more about than 10% of the votes. Mm -hmm. So the situation here in U all over Europe is, is quite tense, I think, if you look at France, if you look at Hungary or Poland. Mm -hmm. And it's because um, the politicians actually don't have a very good plan mm -hmm. on how to handle this situation. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but this experience, experience is not a new one to European people. So that, uh, and then the, why the politicians are, don't have a good plans in place? Well, actually, this is a very good question. Why don't they have a plan in <laughs> right, place? Right. Um, 
here in Europe, or especially here in Germany, we had several waves of migration. Oh. Uh, in the 60s, we mm. had a lot of foreign workers coming into Germany oh. and working here in the factories. Okay. Um, in the 90s, there was the Yugoslavia war, and uh -huh. many people uh, fled from ex-Yugoslavia and came to Germany. Uh -huh. So we have a lot of experience with migration, oh. and people were able to integrate quite smoothly, mm -hmm. but this new situation, I think everyone is overwhelmed by this, uh, this uh, lots of people coming in, mm -hmm. and they don't know actually what to do and how to handle the situation. It sounds you know, the, the, Sorry? Sorry, it sounds very strange to me, Thomas, because over the years, since the 60s, already uh, 50, 60 years have passed, and I'm sure uh, your people have already learned to listen to how to handle them, and they have successfully assimilated to the local cultures. Why now in the 21st century uh, people yeah. are having a tough time as if it were new to you? What's wrong yes, with thing, Europe? What's wrong with Europe? Uh, I, I think the thing is they didn't take this, this very new problem very seriously. Oh. You know the problem in Syria. Uh -huh. um, everyone knew that something something will happen but they didn't take it seriously enough. Oh. So now we have a problem with so many people coming in and mm. such a huge amount of people. Mm. So this is the real problem right now, mm -hmm. how to handle the situation. Mm. And if you have a one million people, um, mm. for example, here in Germany, mm -hmm. this is not very easy to handle. Oh, exactly. So the basic exactly. problem is that these people are sitting around and waiting. They apply uh, as asylum seekers, mm. but it takes a long time, the whole procedure sometimes mm. takes more than one and a half years. Mm, right. These people are sitting here, they don't mm. work. And I think this is something what we have to do mm. uh, to give some, some work, some perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, he, for example, here in Germany, there are the German industry, the German industries, they are starting several initiatives mm -hmm. to integrate oh. the, new, um, the, the newcomers, right. I mean the refugees, oh. to integrate them and to give them some work, to qualify them, to mm. educate them. Mm. Before you were saying uh, people in Germany are, are uh, split in their opinions, for yes. and against. Uh, uh, as a German citizen yourself, um, yes. living in Munich, Germany, or traveling around Europe, uh, in the common uh, views of the town uh, community, do people are people feeling some tense, uh, uh, tense uh, emotions when they look at the immigration immigrants? Yes, actually they do. Mm -hmm. They do. There are several people who are really afraid of this. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's like a, how could I say a xenophobic mm -hmm. mood? <laughs> oh, a little xenophobic. Bit. Xenophobia. Um, Oh. And you really um, have a lot of people who are afraid. Mm. Uh, well, you actually know there were some, um, some incidents, for example, around mm. New Year in Cologne. Mm -hmm. um, right. Probably with a lot of people, um, with a lot of migrants mm -hmm. being involved in these incidents. Right. And now people are very, very careful. Mm. And um, so the whole, the whole situation is, mm. is, is really a little bit tense here. That's mm. right. Well, uh, where is Europe going to in terms of this uh, happy coexistence with uh, uh, immigrants? Yes, I think, um, well, we will have more and more refugees, I think. Um, mm -hmm. The German government, I, I read some data mm -hmm. last, uh, right. last uh, yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, the German government expects more than two million uh, oh. further immigrants oh during the next three or four years. Oh. So we have really have to, we need a plan what to do with all these, with immigrants. They have to, they have to get some work, they have to get some life perspective. Mm. You know, in a way, it mm. might even be a chance for mm. our society. Chance. Uh, a chance, yes. There, there are some experts who say that in the long run, mm -hmm. it's, it's even good for the German economy. Oh. Oh. And as you know, German economy, for example, is um, now relatively strong. And our society is also an aging society, mm -hmm. which means people are getting older and older. And maybe you know, we, here we have a social welfare system mm -hmm. that means the young generation is mm -hmm. paying mm -hmm. the pension for the older generation. Same here in Japan. 
Yes. Mm, so mm. if the people are getting older and older and more and more people are getting older and older and the young people are getting less, you really have a problem. Mm, Either mm, the pension mm, will be reduced mm. or the young generation uh, right. has to pay more. Okay. So, so if, you, mm. if these immigrants are coming in and most of them are quite young, so mm. they're really a, quite a young generation mm, mm. and they, they can make a living here in Germany mm, and they mm. can work, so this they, might even be a chance. So they can help the German economy even more as productive uh, workers. Exactly. Uh, so, uh, you were saying German is the strongest economy still now. Do you really believe that uh, it is because of the immigrants or because of the more local DNAs of German people, not the immigrants? Well, I, I, th I think it's not possible to say it's because of the immigrants. Mm -hmm. um, I think there, there have been made some decisions which were, which were quite useful, mm -hmm. some structural decisions to, to get more productive. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but the, the immigrants, if they also can become productive, this might really be a good chance. Mm -hmm. I think there are mm -hmm. a lot of creative people there, a lot mm -hmm. of productive people. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are also people who might uh, turn criminal, mm -hmm. you know. Um, there might be people who don't obey our laws, who don't mm -hmm. follow our rules. Mm -hmm. And if these people are here, well, and if they don't follow our rules, they, they, they should be either be punished or be sent back. Sure. Okay. To, to uh, change the topic a little bit, yes. uh, U.S. presidential campaign. One of the campaigners, uh, as everyone knows, is saying that they want to build up walls around the Mexican border and send back all the Muslim people outside of the United States. Yes. Uh, is this setting the global becoming the trend in the in the near future and ultimately becoming the norm? I mean, just nationalistic well, uh, emotions. Yes, I hope not so. I hope you're there right. are actually some some tendencies like this even here in Europe. If mm. you look at Hungary, for mm. example. Mm. I don't hope this will become a norm. Okay. Well, right at the moment, this is a kind of policy that people mm. maybe want to hear. Right. They want to listen to. Mm. But I think I think if there if there will be more a more peaceful situation, especially in mm. the Near East, okay. uh, things will change uh, again. To wrap up our conversation, Thomas, let's uh, yes. talk just briefly about relevance and listen to Japan. Japan yes. has been not as proactive as your country, of course, in taking the, the, the immigrants. Yes. Uh, because the Japanese culture is very unique, and perhaps for a lot of immigrants, it will be, yes. it will be very difficult for them to assimilate to Japanese yes. culture compared yes. to their assimilation, uh, assimilation to European culture. Do you still True. believe Japan should be more open to take in, accept the Im Im immigrants? Well, that's a tough question. It's it's hard to give a recommendation. Mm. Uh, first of all, I think first of all, Japan is is quite far away <laughs> from all these hot hot uh, up the, from these places mm. where right. all these problems arise from. Right, right. This is the first thing. And second, I think you are right. Japan is a very unique um, and very special culture. Mm -hmm. and uh, with a very special DNA. And I think it's very difficult for outsiders mm -hmm. to integrate into mm -hmm. this culture. Mm -hmm. um, on the other hand, Japan in its, in its history always uh, was able to integrate foreign ideas. Yeah, if you right. look that's at right. Right. importing ideas from China or right. even from the Western right. world. Right. It might even be possible to integrate some people, but I think Japan has to go a very gentle and soft way. Uh, Large-scale immigration is not possible, I yeah, think, for Japan. Well, this topic needs further discussion more and more. And thank you very much indeed for sharing your views from Munich, Germany, Dr. Well. Yeah, thank you for having me on your program. Okay, next time you visit our, our, our studio, please. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. I'd love to. Thank you. Now, let's uh, go back a little bit to karate or martial art or any actually uh, pursuit of discipline, whether it be martial arts or tea ceremony, flower arrangement, brush painting, oil painting, uh, Zen practice setting in a lotus position in, uh, in Zen temples, whatever pursuit you are you're attempting. Uh, it is said there are three stages of mastery of the kata. It's, and uh, it is called 
Shu Ha Li. Shu is, you know, uh, br very briefly uh, speaking, is acquiring kata. Ha is breaking out of kata. Li is leaving kata. Now, acquiring is a basic beginner stage. You just uh, copy, uh, follow uh, faithfully what your teachers tell you to do. No questions asked. Basic acquiring, acquiring stage. Now, breaking kata, of course, I mean figuratively. It doesn't mean breaking away from all the secrets. But uh, it is, this is a stage where you, are, where you feel like you have mastered almost everything, but that is a mistake. There's a much deeper secret behind the superficial techniques, right? So this is, you feel you, you are the master of, of everything, but you're uh, being a bit too proud of your techniques. There's one more final stage, which is a much higher stage of leaving kata. This is a stage where your master teacher Master trainer uh, will tell you, okay, Miss Itadia, you have acquired all my secrets. I have no more things to teach you. You can go out on your own, open up your own school of Japanese art of karate or tea ceremony, whatever it is. Wow. You are licensed to open your own shop, so to speak. Is that possible? It's possible. It happens in tea ceremony, all the other <clears throat> all the, uh, you know, art forms in Japan. So shu, ha, li, basic intermediate and on your own independent. I now see. if you compare this very interestingly to the, uh, what do you call it, the process of a fruit growth, mm -hmm. the apples and uh, you know, oranges and fruit. Now this is a, a symbol of uh, autumn in Japan, uh, Japanese persimmon or kaki. Uh, when the fruit ripes, of course you, we have, they, they have to go through three stages, right? Seeds, and flower, bl blossom blooming, and then the bare fruit. Mm -hmm. So seeds stage, which is acquiring basic uh, routine stage, is most important, isn't it? Nutrition, water uh, from sun and you know from right. the soil. You have to have a full bloom, and then bear fruit. So your efforts will bear fruit mm -hmm. when the fruit is born. Now look at this. Um, uh, uh, this uh, famous no master, no theatrical play dance master by the name of Zayami, he came up with a training manual of no play called Kakyo. In the book Kakyo, he writes, don't forget your first resolution. I'm sure your teachers often uh, taught us when, as a child, don't forget your first resolution. So out of the three stages, Shuhari, First resolution is, of course, about the basic uh, shoe stage, eh? beginning stage. Because first resolution, or seize the stage, if it's a, 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 the, the fruit, is most important. Mm -hmm. So Japan's secret to uh, uh, whatever mastery of art, technology, and so forth, uh, originates from this concept of three stages, not hastily jump into the hasty conclusion that you have mastered everything. Not yet, and not yet, and not yet. To end the program, I must tell you and show you one final photo which I have taken again in one of the Asian countries, which is the Japanese biggest problem. You know, when the Japanese people are thrown into this kind of a chaotic environment, I'm sorry to this <laughs> country people, it, there is a rule there, but to us it looks like chaotic and no order. When the Japanese, who are so used to kata, are thrown into this kind of a chaotic environment, they don't know how to act. They go panic. So that means Japanese people have not yet mastered the global art of kata. <laughs> In Japan, it's okay. Global art. Global art is still a long way to go. Now we know kata, or form, is an important component of Japanese way of life. Meticulous attention and care is given to maintain kata at its top condition. And the point is, uh, kata is not a mere protocol. It is pregnant with uh, lots of uh, endless trials and errors done by our four, uh, four, uh, four runners. So if you follow the kata or the proven processes, you can acquire the essence of the, of the matter real fast and uh, reduce critical failures when you move on to add your own personal style and creativity. And this is Japan spirit. 
Before we close, if you have interesting story, photos, or video about Japan spirit or your national culture, please send them to gojapanspirit at ch-sakura.jp. We will respond to you in our program. Until next time, goodbye. goodbye.